Football is the girl's identity. I'm free, I became so happy. Violence was escalating and the girls had seen almost everything that you can possibly witness. And I can understand the situation was so bad, especially for girls or women. Operation Soccer Balls had one goal, rescuing Afghanistan's national girls football team. I lose my friends because of a Taliban group. In the past, they killed my friends. It was real hard for us, really. And so also, you were terrified? Yeah. Then Sadaf got news of an escape plan. When I heard, oh my God, it was like a light in the dark sky of our life. Do you miss Afghanistan? <laughs> yes. No one wants to leave her family or her country. The girls were flown to Portugal, where they'd been given asylum. I went to visit them during one of their training sessions. Female footballers in Afghanistan were advised to burn their kit for their own protection. But for Sadaf, it meant too much. I'm proud of that and I, I have a special respect for that because it changed my life really. This is Fakunda. She orchestrated the girls' escape from her home in Canada and is now their coach. These are uh, fantastic girls. They train hard. They dedicate so much just to football. Yeah. If they stayed in Afghanistan, they would not be able to play football. They would not be educated. And if you were an athlete and the community knew you were an athlete, they would come after you. And so a plan was devised to get them out of Afghanistan. We had attempted 10 times to rescue them. When you're unsuccessful, people start to lose hope. Sada filmed one of their first attempts. They trekked through mountains to reach Kabul airport, but there'd been a suicide bomb in there and they couldn't get through. So they needed another escape plan. Another option was the Uzbekistan border, but by the time they arrived there, it was closed. They had to go into hiding, their mental health deteriorating. I would hop on Zoom with them, run a yoga session. We would do some reflections on, you know, happy moments. Eventually, there was a breakthrough, and on September the 19th, the group boarded a flight to Portugal. After they landed, Fakunda went to visit them. She only intended to stay for a few days, but found she couldn't leave them. She plans to stay for a year and help them start new lives here. As soon as the girls got out, the first thing they said is, we want to be the voice for the girls left behind. And that's something extremely brave. They defied all odds to play. The girls haven't all been able to stay together though. Some have been given homes in different parts of the country. So I traveled north to find out how they're getting on. Hi. You're happy here? Yeah, we are happy here. <laughs> that we know that we can continue our knowledge, our education, our football in here again and again. And we can have a good future in here as well, I think. Omar Benin is here with two teammates, but they're missing their friends. She hopes they can play together again in the future. When I play football, I forgot everything, everything in my life, in my study, everything. When I uh, leave Afghanistan, I afraid. And now I'm so happy, I'm so happy that uh, I'm relaxed. It's shocking to think that this really simple thing that they're doing just isn't allowed in Afghanistan anymore. The girls were able to bring three family members with them and are worried for those they've left behind. Uh, this is my mother, who I call her aunt, my auntie. Can you mention that she's right now here? Not everyone was able to get out though, and the girls know how lucky they are to be here and free to pursue their dreams. There still will be an Afghan girls national team, but it would be similar to any national program. So girls would be training with their own football clubs, and then we'll have training camps where they would all come together. This is the beginning of something special.